All right, time for exponential growth and decay. Um, this is actually super important right now um, in the time of COVID because that curve that we were trying to flatten, one of the curves was an exponential growth curve because we do not want the virus to grow. Um, we want, I guess, the population of people who have COVID to decay. So this is actually super applicable um, to that, as are the graphs. So I will have mentioned that in the graphing lesson. Um, depending on the book, you will have the same setup but different variables. And you can choose. I am likely going to go with the bottom one because I have trouble saying this one. But there's a T that stands for time. There is a D that stands for time as well, but it's specific to the question. So the number that fits in this bracket is a number that tells you whether your population is doubling, that's growing, tripling, that's growing, half-life, that's decay, and other possibilities. Even in the case of the money math, the compound interest, you were technically finding how much your money was growing. But then I will also tell you or have you find the time it takes to double or triple or half-life or whatever. And that will be the denominator of the exponent. The two other pieces, the thing that fit where the A and the P did in compound interest, and I can flip there if you find it useful. So this position and this position. It can be filled with pretty much whatever letters you want. So sometimes in a textbook you'll see Y as the final amount. And this thing is called why not, as in N-O-U-G-H-T. Um, it means the initial or starting amount when you have a little zero below. For those of you in science, you may have seen this kind of thing in science, which means the initial time. Um, so that's one of them. And you, in order to use the formula we use here, as opposed to in calculus, you must know how the population is changing. So I must be telling you whether it's doubling or tripling or whatever the case is. Um, the other possibility, and the one I like better because the, it's easier to say and it's easier to keep them straight for me personally, is I put an A in the final amount so that it's pretty much the same as uh, compound interest. Instead of a P for principal in here, I will use a C. Um, that's typical of most textbooks. You could use a P. You could use your initials here as long as they're not the same initial. In the bracket, you still fit whether it's doubling, tripling, or half-life. You still have the time in question in the numerator of the exponent, and you still have the time it takes to do whatever it's doing in the denominator of the exponent. So we're going to do some questions. Oh, there it is again. Oh, there's me using P. So if I back it up to compound interest, something I probably should have mentioned, but this is a one day event for word problems. This means end amount, and this means principal, which is basically beginning amount. So back to compound, or back to exponential growth and decay. And you can use whatever you want. I may bop between them. So here is our first two questions. Um, they're a bit funky for this, but still I I'm going to make my list. So it says bacteria of a certain type are known to divide every hour, thus producing two bacteria for every previous one. That is a wordy way of saying that in this bracket you're going to put a two because it's doubling. Then it says, suppose 100 of these are breathed into Paul's lungs. So that's the beginning amount. It says, how many bacteria will be living in his lungs after T hours? So this is a question mark because I don't know what the T is. Or if you prefer, they're asking you to put T in for T. This is unknown as well because it says how many bacteria will live in his lungs in the future. And then D 
It says way back at the top, bacteria of a certain type are known to divide every hour. So that means D is 1. And question A is actually just, will you please make a formula and make it look pretty? So here's the main formula. And you can see that I went with the A and P version. So A is A, P is 100. This is 2. T is T, because I didn't give it to you, over 1, which is D. And I can make that look prettier, which is that. You can't go any further. Even in compound interest, you can't multiply something with an exponent with something that doesn't have an exponent. So you have to stop, and we have to go on to part B, which says, how many bacteria will live in his lungs after five hours? So I'm basically telling you, can you put T equals 5 into this? So A equals 100 times 2 to the 5. Now I'm going to show a bunch of work because I want you to follow bed mass because bed mass is king. You really do have to finish off the exponent first and then come out with your multiplying at the end. So you do have to follow bed mass. If you dumped it all into your calculator, you can get an answer that way. Um, it'll be fine without showing the work. However, if you try it mentally and do 100 times 2 and then to the 5, you will get the wrong answer. But I can give you an answer of there will be 3,200 bacteria. Did not use logarithms. Next one. Half-life, P, A, something goes in the bracket, T, D. So it's a half-life of radon, which is a thing on the periodic table. Um, the half-life, O, of radon is four days. Basically that means if I start with a certain amount, four days later I will have half of it. And four days after that I will have half again and so on. So I just told you how often you get half of it. That's what that D is. It says determine the mass of radon remaining from a sample of 15 grams, and I'm going to put grams here so I don't have to necessarily reread again, after 16 days. So what's important is that this and this have the same units. You don't have to write it down, but you do have to mentally check that. Main formula. So A is in question, 15, a half or 0.5 and then 16 divided by 4. And because I can do 16 divided by 4 without too much complication, I'm going to do that first. Because I'm a math teacher, I can take 1 to the 4 and 2 to the 4. And because I am a math teacher, I can multiply fractions on paper or in my head. So that means that after 16 days, we don't even have one gram of this stuff left. We have 15 sixteenths, so just slightly less than one gram. So therefore, there will be 15 over 16 grams left. And you can say of radon if you want to. Now I am digging out my calculator. to tell you that if you had used your calculator to plug this in, you would do 0.5 likely to the exponent 4 equals that nasty decimal times 15, and you would have that many grams left. And if I check 0.9375, 15 divided by 16 is the same thing. So you can have two different answers. Um, obviously, I am making sure that we do a bunch of mental math for those of you who are going to schools that don't let you use a calculator. 
So still, no logarithms with this one. You have, part of the problem is you have to decide whether logarithms are necessary. So next question. All right. Biologist makes a sample count of bacteria, finds it doubles. Okay, so that indicates that I dig out this rather than the money. So it says, a biologist makes a sample count of bacteria in a culture and finds that it doubles every three hours. The estimated count at the end is a thousand bacteria, and that was for six hours. And the question is, what is the initial size of the culture at t equals zero? So this right here, initial size, initial, and t equals zero, mean exactly the same thing. So basically it's redundant and I'm asking you to find the p-value. So part A, lay down my formula. So A is 10,000, p is p, bracket is the 2, and then 6 over 3. I'm pretty excited because I can actually do 6 divided by 3 and come out with something nice, so I'm going to do it. And hey, I can do 2 to the 2 as well and get 4, and instead of writing P4, I'm going to write 4P. And I know how to undo this. This isn't taking logarithms. And therefore, the starting amount, the initial amount, the, ta the amount at time equals zero was that many bacteria. All right, so what is the estimated count after one day? So I'm going to start a new list. So I am still doubling every three hours, only now I know how much I started with, and it's asking me to figure out how much is at the end of one day. So that's the end, and I'm going to put one in here, right? Wrong. You have to convert that. So A equals P bracket T over D. A is in question. Do you see that this is also not a logarithm question? OK, I know that 2 to the 8 is fairly large, so I'm just going to figure it out. 2 to the 8 is 256 times the 2,500 that was there at the beginning, and I get 640,000 bacteria. That's estimated, so these are predictors. There should be All right. So what was the count after 1.5 hours? So we get to do this all again, only this time I'm not going to put one day in here. I'm going to put 1.5 hours, which also means no conversion. So I'm just going to have this list handy so I can copy it. And I'm checking that my T and my D have the same units, which they did not up here, which is why the conversion was necessary. If you keep writing this down, you will memorize it. And yes, you need to memorize it for the test. And I'm going to do something that some of you are not going to like with this question. But I don't care, <laughs> because 
I have to set some of you guys up for schools that don't let you use a calculator. So 1.5 divided by 3 is 0.5. And 0.5 is a half. And a half, as an exponent, is a square root. So if you are at a school that doesn't let you use a calculator, you can do this question because of this math. And that is from the logarithm rules. Also super necessary for calculus class. Now, this really doesn't make much sense for people who are not using going to school without a calculator. So I'm going to do 2,500 times root 2, and I get 3535.5332. 3, or 906. So my answer is there will be, and this is definitely approximately, because I cannot have a decimal number of bacteria, there will be approximately 3535 3, bacteria. And if you're wondering why I'm not rounding up because of rounding rules, it's because I was taught in high school that if you have part of a bacteria, it's not alive, so you round down. Um, if you had 3536 because you wanted to round properly, I would be totally okay. However, if you're using this as a resource, you need to check with your particular teacher. All right, let's go on. Two more questions. And of course, I have forgotten to tell you that all these questions are available on the Google site and that you didn't need to write them down because they were part of just a handout. So let's move this out. All right, so I see the word half-life. Pretty good indicator that I need to dig out this list rather than the money list. Half-life of a radioactive substance is 23 days. How long time will it take for 70% of it to decompose? This is tricky because I don't want you to put 70% in here because A represents how much is left. So if it's 70% of it to decompose, that means there's 30% left and 30% is what I put in the final slot. 100% is what I put in the initial slot. So now I can dump it all into the main formula. So 30 equals 100, a half or 0.5. T is unknown, D is 23. So just like compound interest, we have to get rid of this 100 first because we can, doing math we know previous to logarithms. And I don't know how many of you noticed that this was a how long question, so this is actually a logarithm question. And I'm going all decimals, because there is never going to be a question like this that doesn't expect you to use a calculator. So the numbers are not set up properly. So now I'm going to log both sides. And I'm going to do that step-saving line. So if I log 0.3, that means I'm also logging the other side. So it is a two-for-one deal. Then I, instead of putting t over 23 up here, I'm going to put t over 23 here. And there is a reason I put it as a stacked fraction rather than a slashy fraction. And that is because I'm going to put an over 1 over here so I can cross multiply. So if I cross multiply, it's 1 times all this stuff. So t log 0.5 equals, cross in this way, 23 times log 0.3. And to get the t by itself, the amount of time in question, divide both sides by log 0.5, and get yourself an answer using your calculator. So this is not a question that you would see at a school that didn't let you use a calculator. So 23 times log 0.3 divided by log 0.5 equals 39.9502 So to one decimal place, 
I have to specify that it's not exactly 40, it's 40.0. Therefore, it will take, I'm going to throw in approximately 40.0 days. All right, last question. And actually, the last question is here to explain to things to people who are going into the sciences, who, and you probably have more experience with this than me, even at this point, is sometimes, and you can explain this to me personally if you'd like, sometimes you get a number in a name that you just purely ignore. So in this particular question up here, there is a radioactive substance that I did not name that decomposes when it's left on a counter, as opposed to bacteria, which might double. The name of this substance is bismuth 2010, and I highly recommend that you Google it because I think it's a pretty substance. Um, so you might want to see what bismuth looks like. I'm not sure about the 2010, something about isotopes. Fill me in later. So here's my list. So two milligrams of the radioactive bismuth 210 decays with a half-life of five days. So I start with two milligrams, start with two milligrams, it's decaying with a half-life, and it takes We're going to end up with this amount, also in milligrams, so that's handy. And it takes five days to do what it's doing. And my question is, determine the time it takes. So two milligrams of the radioactive substance bismuth-210 started with, decays with a half-life of five days, determine the time it takes for a sample to reduce to 0.8 milligrams. Main formula. Fill it in. Divide both sides by two. Log both sides. 0.4 equals 0.5. And then drop the exponent down in the front, which is exactly why you log both sides, because of that law of powers. I like the 1 for the visual of crossing this way. So 1 times t log 0.5 is t log 0.5. 5 times log 0.4 is 5 times log 0.4. Divide on both sides to get your t by itself. So I'm going to use this calculator this time. 5 times I have to put in the 0.4 and then hit log. And you are not supposed to panic because you may see a negative on there. Because I still have to keep going. I still have to do divided by. 0.5, hit the log button, another negative will give me a positive answer. So you are not supposed to panic. 6.61. Two decimal places just for fun. So therefore, it will take, I figured out time, 6.61. Oh, do I have to go back and read the whole question to figure out what time unit is being used? No, because I'm super smart. This is days. However, you can totally go back. Oh, it's been a while, hasn't it? You can totally go back and check if you like. Determine the time it takes. Yep, got it. All right, so 
There is a sheet in your book, suggested questions only, um, and this is your last word problem or application for me. Remember, there's lots, but all of it is treated the same. If you have an exponent in the numerator, sorry, if you have a variable in the numerator of the exponent, you will have a logarithm question. If you have an unknown anywhere else, you do not have a logarithm question. All right. Oh my gosh, new records being set every day.